Yeah, that's right, Lisa. The Solano County District Attorney, Krishna Abrams, tells me that advances in DNA technology did two things in this case. First of all, she says it exonerated Sean Melton. He's the man who was wrongly accused and tried twice in the boy's murder. And secondly, she says that DNA linked uh, to the Oregon man who is now charged in the murder. And she says that her office never gave up on finding the truth, even if it took nearly 40 years. The school picture of six-year-old Jeremy Stoner stands on an easel in the Solano County District Attorney's Office, a reminder of who they're fighting for. This death of Jeremy Stoner rocked this entire community. Six-year-old near his house, gets abducted, gets brutally murdered, um, and we believe sexually assaulted. Stoner disappeared in February of 1987 in his Vallejo neighborhood. His body found four days later on Sherman Island. Now the district attorney and cold case investigators say they found the boy's killer after 36 long years with a DNA match. It was an unidentified profile uh, through research over their months. Uh, we came up with uh, a potential lead that we needed to uh, get a DNA sample from and, and it went from there. Investigators say that match led them to 69-year-old Fred Kane III in Oregon. Jackson County Sheriff's deputies in Oregon arrested Kane at his home. He moved from Vallejo in 1990, three years after the murder. Kane was a person of interest in 87, and detectives even questioned him. We had found some information in the reports and figured out where he was and uh, one thing led to another. The same day detectives talked with Kane in 1987, they also interviewed Sean Melton. Melton was charged and went to trial twice, both trials ending in hung juries. So I think it's kind of bittersweet for so many people um, because, you know, here was Mr. Melton who was tried twice for this case, but yet DNA has now exonerated him, which is so huge. We just really want to get justice for the Stoner family, and even if it takes 36 years, we hope to do that. Well, and Fred Kane waived extradition from Oregon, and I'm told he is expected in Solano County sometime later this week. Reporting live in Fairfield, Michelle Bandur, KCRA 3 News. So, Michelle, what happened to the wrongly accused man, Sean Melton? Well, unfortunately, Lisa, he didn't live long enough to see his exoneration. He passed away in the year 2000, still proclaiming his innocence in the case. Coming up at 6, you'll want to stay with us because I did speak to Melton's former public defender and has his reaction on this cold case arrest. Wow, so sad he didn't live to see the day he was exonerated.